everybody? It's your boy Jonathan D'Angelo, aka Johnny D. I got Mermaid Moonchild with me. You are tuned in to another Blur View session. And today, tonight, this morning, whenever you're listening to this, we are going over episode three, not two, but three of WandaVision. Uh, they gave us the first two episodes out the gate. Uh, thank you, Kevin Feige, for that. And now we're on episode three, and we're still trying to figure out what in the f- is going on here. Um, because we went from so we started in the 1950s, right? And we went to the 1960s. Uh, she got pregnant yeah. in the 60s, smack dab in the 70s, yeah. And and then she's pregnant, and we start the episode off, and she's out the gate six months, four. Oh, she's four months out the gate. Well, yeah, she's four months out the gate. Um, but like remember, five minutes later, she's not six months pregnant, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then five minutes later, it's like. It's, uh her her pregnancy is progressing. That, that and that's the listen, listen. Imagine all the baby daddies out there. <laughs> that be baby daddies wouldn't even get a chance to like pack their shit and leave. It'd just be like bloop, like, whoa, wait, where'd this come from? Like, hey, hold this for me. Like, <laughs> like that is wild to me. So her magic was progressing her pregnancy, and that's what we're going to assume. Um, but I think it was a self-inflicted progression. What do you think? Yeah, it seems like there's some sort of a time crunch on everything that's going on in this um, alternate reality that she, in my opinion, has created for herself. Like everything seems to have to be happening at this expedited rate. Like Maybe it's collapsing on itself. And it kind of seems like that later on in the episode that the further along into the fantasy she falls like the more and more unstable this reality becomes right so vision and this is the thing right so vision is starting to realize that something's not right here right and so that makes me think like because remember like me and you were talking about this when we were watching the episode yesterday in in uh infinity in infinity war shiri was trying to download vision's consciousness so that they could get rid of the mind stone so it's possible that even though Thanos ripped the Mind Stone out of Vision, that was his power source. If Wanda was able to find another power source, she could have rebooted him. She could have pulled his consciousness or magic his consciousness into being again, just like uh, they did with uh, Coulson on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, it has. And, and because there are such strong ties between what's going on in WandaVision with Agent of Sword and Agent of Shield coming together. I, I can see using that same technology um, that they used to create Coulson's, what, 5, 6, 7.0? <laughs> um, yeah. Using that same situation to create Vision. And if you think about it, Wanda's magic is strong enough to create babies. Yeah. That, and we know that that's sourced from, you know, the shards of uh, Mephisto's soul, but still, mm-hmm. she still created life using right. her magic. So yeah, I'm pretty sure she could be a power source or create a power source um, to bring Vision back to life. And spoiler alert for those who didn't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., especially seasons four, uh, seasons uh, four, five, six, and seven. So, um, basically, uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. create a robot that then becomes AI right after Age of Ultron takes place. They create their own Ultron, so to speak, named Ava. And Ava uh, kidnaps the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and uploads their consciousness into what's called the Framework, which is a uh, a computer program simulator, which simulates the real world. And so they have real world consequences in this virtual reality, but their consciousness, all the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s consciousness are in this virtual reality. And um, Coulson dies, for the third time in the in the MCU timeline, and they make him an L, what they call an LMD, uh, which is basically a super advanced robot, not quite like Vision, but basically an Ultron version of Agent Coulson. And they download his consciousness that was saved on uh, from the framework uh, simulator on into this robot, so that the robot Coulson has all of his experiences and memories up to a certain point, and. That's very possible with Vision because Vision, like Ultron, was omnipotent, omnipresent, so long as there was a mainframe for him to upload into. So Wanda, after Endgame, could have taken Vision's body because, remember, 
they all got snapped. So they came back exactly where they were but when the snap happened. So Wanda appeared right there in Wakanda in the forest outside of uh, outside of the city of Wakanda when um, uh, Black Panther was like, hey, we got to go. So it's possible that Vision's consciousness was able to be downloaded um, just like Coulson's was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that... Um, I think that he is in existence in some way, either tied to her consciousness as a like as a working memory or an independent memory or actually like downloaded and he's hooked up to some kind of machine um, that's keeping him alive, which I hope because I'd like to see more vision. But yeah, I'm sure they'll eventually give us whatever, because unlike um, Wanda. Vision is fighting against, and for lack of a better word, fighting against framework. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm a huge Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, so <laughs> it, I see so many similarities between what's happening in WandaVision and, and what happened in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And spoiler alert, it this is all kind of tying the, un- this whole show is supposed to tie the universe and the multiverse all together. Yeah. So a lot of the characters from Agents of Children now have an opportunity to be more present in the MCU because of this show. Um, so I'm excited about that. Oh. <laughs> I'm super so excited about that. So let's talk about the Easter eggs real quick. So the first Easter egg was the accelerated pregnancy, but the but the next Easter egg is when Vision walks outside and Herb is out there and he and Herb is trimming the hedges at first and then he starts trimming the brick wall. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, that was wild. <laughs> and I'm like, and 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 Bish is like, Herb, are you all right? And he's like, Yeah, I'm fine. And he keeps like, and he's like, You're cutting the wall. And he's like, and Herb's like, Oh yeah, yep. <laughs> I yes, like, I am. Yeah. It's weird that it seems like the people inside of this universe know they're trapped, but they just can't say anything about it. Um, yeah. Because Agnes shows up and in a later scene, and that dialogue was. Yeah, very yeah. telling of kind of how they have to keep it hush yeah. hush, like very mums the word. Yeah, we'll get we'll get we'll get to that in a second. And then um another Easter egg that's been prominent throughout all three episodes that makes me question Vision's existence is the fact that Vision still has the mind stone yeah. um, in his forehead. And so he is exactly his the image of himself is exactly how Wanda remembered him before Endgame. So he still has the stone which the Infinity Stones were destroured. And then, you know, during end, at the end of Endgame, Captain America took them back to their respective places in time because they had to time travel to get them back so they could undo the snap. So Vision should not have uh, the stone because they're technically... Well, it's a catch-22 because even though the timeline... The, the timeline... It's an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. thing again with the timelines. Even though... Um, Thanos destroyed the Infinity Stones in one timeline. They kind of created a new timeline by going back and getting the stones, but Vision is still dead, technically, regardless. Um, he didn't come back in Endgame. That confirmed it. Like he's he died in, in Infinity War. So Vision should not have the Mind Stone. Um, another one is uh, another Easter egg. Um, is Billy and Tommy. Yeah. So that is that those are the names of her twin boys uh during the House of M uh arc for the egg the X-Men comic and the House of M and Power of X arc where you know those are the sons that she gives birth to using Mephisto's uh pieces of Mephisto's soul. So and Mephisto absorbs them uh after she gives birth well we didn't see that this episode but we i don't but you know it didn't happen you mean the reabsorption yeah he 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 re yeah well he absorbs them to reabsorbs his power to reabsorb his soul back together and become full power so so i have i i've I've been i've been theory diving go ahead that's how that's how i do but um i don't think we're going to see him reabsorb the boys until like everything is so accelerated because he needs them to get old enough to get powers Mm. and then he's going to reabsorb them so that he can get their powers Mm. so that's one of the theories behind the accelerated timeline that is 
pretty believable if you if you really think about it. I like that. I like that. Yeah, because they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't like he. If you think about it from a from a power standpoint, they wouldn't be at full power until they were older, which is why we're getting the different decades of WandaVision so that the twins can grow old enough for Mephisto to take them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah, I thought I didn't think about that. Because in the, in the <laughs> one of the um, things that I thought was cool about the Billy and Tommy scenario in WandaVision, the show um, versus Billy and Tommy in the comics is the naming scenario, right? Because they made a big deal about what name they were going to pick. And when she thought she was having one baby, they were going back and forth, Billy, no Tommy. Um, but it's funny because in the comics, they're like Billy and Tommy are named after, um, Tommy's named after the scientist that um, basically did, like created Vision's body in the comics, his Android body. And then, Will or uh, Billy is named after um what's his name? Simon Williams, who is an Avenger whose brain patterns um Vision's brain is kind of made mm. to follow. So that's how they got the naming in the comics, but because the MCU didn't use the same storyline as the comics. They had to come up with this like fake scenario in WandaVision about, well, I want to name him after William Shakespeare. Well, I want him to have an all-American name. So I think that was uh, a cute way for them to still kind of highlight that the names have significance, um, but not mess up the fact that they didn't really follow the comics when they were telling the story way back when because they didn't use um, anybody's brain patterns and nobody made it like, that doctor didn't make his um, Android body in MCU as it exists today. It was, you know, Jarvis and <laughs> they can't name the Jarvis and Ultron. <laughs> Facts. And so there were actually two Hydra Easter eggs. So the um, the neighbor, a uh, vision goes over to the neighbor's house to ask if their power went out because Wanda was having contractions that were causing her the like magical anomalies. And the newspaper said something about Hydra on the neighbor's mm -hmm. newspaper. Then the commercial said um, the commercial was about Hydra soap, and yeah. there's a around where uh, and going back to you know Ages of Shield reference when they were in the framework, Hydra actually took over when when the Ages of Shield in the framework, Hydra took over the world in that virtual world, and so Coulson instead of being the head of Shield, he became after Nick Fury stepped down after the events of uh, Civil War, Coulson was actually a school teacher. And with Colson being a school teacher, he was teaching kids like, you know, like how they teach us in America, lies and bullshit. So <laughs> Hydra being like this God entity that came in and saved everyone after a after an inhuman event. But Colson was saying that Colson was also a conspiracy buff. And he was saying that he makes his own soap in the framework because he feels like the soap that uh, is mass produced has like mind control abilities created by Hydra. And so there's a meme floating around that, you know, Colson is saying, oh, I make my own soap. And then it's the Hydra soap. <laughs> so from uh, WandaVision, I love how people were tying that together. That's interesting um, that you keep seeing Hydra. And I'm, you know, I'm starting to, because I'm starting to think maybe Hydra might be involved because we keep seeing these Hydra hints to watch, was Hydra, um, the Strucker, the Von Strucker watch, the Hydra soak. And I know she was an agent of Hydra, but they keep referencing Hydra. And I, but I, but as of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there should be no Hydra. So yeah. I'm like, what's really, like, is this just, is, are they just throwing references out there from who she used to be? Or is this actually something that we need to pay attention to? Because they also mentioned Stark Industries with the toaster. And, you know, we know how that goes. She wanted revenge on Tony at first. Then she became an Avenger. So it's like, you know, I, I you know, this Hydra stuff keeps popping up. But I'm wondering if that has anything to do with it. But according to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there should be no Hydra. Um, I think the high, like a piece of me at first was leaning towards the Hydra. Since most of the Hydra references are ads that are just playing in the background, they're not on anybody's TV. They just play in the middle of an episode. It's yeah. more like just a a trauma flash for one. <laughs> she just kind of snaps into a trauma flash. Yeah. Um, but like you said, the Hydra reference on the newspaper was Vision seeing that. So that's that's where it gets a little tricky because he doesn't have hydrochrome. So he shouldn't have 
manifested a Hydra newspaper in a scene where Wanda's not involved, unless Wanda's just dropping little Hydra trauma bombs all over the place. Right. That and 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 another thing too is um when Vision came through, okay, so remember after Vision came back from the neighbors, right? No, it was after Vision came back outside from talking to her. He glitched, remember? He yeah. was like, Wanda, I think something's not quite right here. And Wanda was like, what do you mean? And as he goes to try and explain it, she resets him. Mm-hmm. And he comes back into the door from seeing her. Or no, he does no, yeah, he comes back into the door. And they have a conversation. Instead of him bringing up Herb, he just is happy that he has a baby. So Wanda is completely like, like just like we said last episode, Wanda is completely aware of her of the reality that she has created and what's going wrong. I think she even knows even what's going wrong, even when she's not there. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And and it's something something that y'all touched on in last week's review that is kind of interesting for the time period they jump to. Because one, you can kind of tell they're mimicking very specific shows as they do these decade jumps. So we're in the Brady Bunch in this episode. And, and the Brady Bunch, one of the things that is pivotal to the Brady Bunch story is that it took place in the late 60s and the 70s, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a time of a lot of um, <laughs> societal conflict. But the Brady Bunch never really references any conflict. They only focus on family and things that happen in family, sibling rivalries, things like that. So it's very interesting that whenever anything slightly conflict comes up, it's like, mm mm, set the scene, which is very like Brady Bunch esque. And you, you guys talked about that last week when he was like, he mentioned that the dude was a communist, and everybody's just like, what? Nah, <laughs> like communist, communist. That whole keeping everything as non, like there is no conflict in Westview at all because yeah. conflict is going to ignite and remind her of probably all the trauma, all the conflict, the things that happened that led up to Endgame and Infinity Wars. And so they, I think it's, I think it's really interesting that they try to uh, minimize or mute any type of conflict scenario that could even come up. Now, speaking of conflict, let's talk about Geraldine. <laughs> let's talk about Geraldine. So Geraldine shows up trying to tell a story, and you have the stork that, like, comes to life off the wall and yeah. is trying to, like, bother Wanda, and she can't magic it away for some reason. Um, and then after uh, after that whole interaction with Geraldine and the stork, and the stork disappears back into the wall, um, uh, Wanda gives birth and Geraldine helps her give birth to to one of the boys to Tommy and then um, Vision comes back with the doctor because he had left because she was having the uh, actual pregnancy contractions he comes back with the doctor the doctor and Geraldine go into the kitchen Vision helps her give birth to Billy and then um, um, Vision sees the doctor out and Geraldine is talking to Wanda and Wanda and Geraldine is like, oh, look, it's twins. And Wanda's like, yeah, I was a twin. I had a brother named Pedro. And Geraldine is like, he was the one who was killed by Ultron. Yeah. <laughs> and so we break all the walls because Wanda's like, the, what did you just say? <laughs> like, who? Like, I ain't say nothing. <laughs> I, I ain't say nothing. What are you talking about? I ain't say nothing. She's like, no, you said something. No, I ain't, nah, Blay, I ain't say nothing. I ain't say nothing. Like, oh, um, no, Wanda, you look at these babies. This is so like she tries to snap back in and it does not work. And Wanda, like, and, and, and you see the necklace on Geraldine's neck, it's sword. It's the yeah, sword. Wanda starts, she's like, what's that? What's that symbol on your necklace? And it's like everything starts to shatter around the character that is Geraldine. And um, Wanda. And and, and that, that is kind of how you know Wanda knows that something weird is going on, but she doesn't want to look it in the face because yeah. Geraldine, Geraldine's character seems to have, even in that second episode where we first meet her, she came, it seems like she came in on a mission to try to do what she did in this last episode and wake Wanda up. But as soon as she met Wanda, it's like she forgot who she was and what she was doing because you remember she stuttered over her name in that second second episode it was like my name is is and then as soon as she touched Wanda it's like Wanda influenced her to get sucked into the fantasy and that's when she became Geraldine because she's not Geraldine 
I think the reason why she she was stuttering over her name is because she was trying to figure out what would work. You know what I mean? Because she needed an old school name. And Geraldine, I ain't never met a child named Geraldine. <laughs> Listen, no, I, I, I really feel like she had a cover and then she lost it. And, and you blew it. touching her because it was Wanda's touch that snapped her into an answer. It made it created a background for her because Wanda is creating backgrounds for everyone. Yeah, because and she bought into being Geraldine until until um, Wanda reminded her of the mission when she said Pietro's name. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's how you know Wanda is consciously aware of what's going on too, because she still remembers her brother. She still remembers the events of Age of Ultron, Infinity War, and Endgame. Um, and then also to back to back that even more, remember. Vision went outside to see the doctor off, and um, Herb and um, what's it? What's Agnes? What, 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 Agnes were uh, over the. First of all, I'm trying to figure out why Ag- Agnes just be showing up. Listen. Agnes is an Easter egg. Agnes is an Easter egg. We'll get let say what you're saying. We'll come back to Agnes. But Agnes, Agnes just be showing up, and her and Herb were having a conversation about uh, Geraldine and Wanda. And when Vision walks up, at first they're not trying to talk to him. And then he like persuades them to talk to him. And they're like, listen, man, like, you know, Geraldine just came from nowhere. She has no home. And yeah, um, she has no home. She just showed up. And they're trying to say it without saying it. And that's why I yeah. like that. And I like, like that dialogue. Uh, and and Vision was like, well, I mean, what's the problem? And they're trying to tell him the problem, but they decide not to because I think they're aware that ba- that 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 saying it out loud might cause conflict. Now, this actually ties into, you know, I, I jumped the gun for a second, but if you backtrack uh, just one, just three frames prior to that, Vision escorts, Vision had picked up the doctor using his super speed, brought the doctor back to the house to deliver the kids with his super speed. Now, when Vision, when the kids are delivered and, and the doctor sees that they're healthy, Vision walks him out, you know, escorts, walks him out the, out the house and down the driveway. Vision was Vision's like, hey, what about that vacation you were going on? And the doctor said, well, you know, it's canceled now because, you know, small towns, they're hard to get out of. Yeah. And Vision yeah. was like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and is he, he the look of dread and doom on the doctor's face because she gave birth? It meant that he was trapped. The doctor was aware of what was going on. His wife wasn't, but his, the doctor was aware of what was going on. But now that Wanda gave birth, he realized that he's trapped there too. And so when Vision goes to the 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 the, the uh, wall, the yard wall, whatever, and talks to Herb and Agnes they also realize that they're trapped there. And when they go to tell Vision, they decide not to because they feel like it's not worth it. And Herb had been cutting the... the like he was trying to escape day. out of the reality any way he could. Yeah. <laughs> cut my way out. And so, you know, Vision and Vision, you know, like, yo, what's going on here? Um, but everybody in that reality is aware for the most part that is an alternate reality. And when, and this is this is during the time that Wanda was having the conversation with Geraldine. So when Wanda and Geraldine have that conflicting conversation about Pedro and or Quicksilver and Ultron, and you know, Wanda realizes, oh wait, you know the truth, she kicked Geraldine out of the of the Westview reality. And you see Gerald, you see a portal open up in an empty field and Geraldine pops out of the portal and lands in the grass in front of a sign that says Westview. So, and it's like the town sign. But the thing is, it looks dead and abandoned. That entire area looks dead and abandoned. And you see the agents of S.W.O.R.D. pull up in different vehicles and helicopters to well, extract Well, we see them. unmarked, we see unmarked vehicles and planes uh, pull up. I assume they were agents of S.W.O.R.D. because they had a whole base behind them. And in front of them was the town of of or what should be the town of, of Westview, but it was like it had it was like portaled off. It was like it had yeah. a portal around it. They had the whole thing yeah. marked off with like little construction things so that people can't get in there. But um I think it one of the ways they say that uh, like I've read how um Geraldine even got in there in the first place. And it's something y'all talked about in the last review. Danny brought it up, Nico Yashin, um that at the voice that was on the radio was the agent who was dealing with Ant-Man. So there's another Ant-Man theory 
that that little helicopter we saw was like they used the pin shrinky thing. Technology, yeah. Yeah, to shrink, to shrink that. Like that's how Geraldine got in. <laughs> like, that was her helicopter oh, that fell that. out of the sky. <laughs> so Ant Man is really getting pulled into this. She she did appear in that same episode. So the plane, yeah. the toy plane would have been the toy helicopter would have been small enough to get her in there unnoticed, and then she jumped out the bushes. The plane, the helicopter landed in the bushes, and she would have jumped out the bushes and grew. That yeah. I can understand that. I can see that. I can definitely see that because she does disappear. Like, and if you think about, if you think about it, in episode two when um Agnes and um. Wanda go to meet um, Dottie. Dottie. Dottie, right? Geraldine isn't part of that crew that comes out of Dottie's house. She just appears at the at the uh, com- at the community meeting for the children. Yeah. She just appears. So, yeah, Geraldine could have. Yeah, you're right. She could have. Uh, she could have showed up on that helicopter, and they and, and it was heli- a sword helicopter, an agent. Yeah. It was a sword labeled helicopter. So yeah, I, yeah, I didn't even think about that because yeah, the, no, yeah, that makes sense. Um, with with PIM technology, they would have been able to infiltrate. And PIM is an agent of they are they're all agents of sword shield, however you want to look at it. But yeah, so I could definitely see that. Uh, work. yeah, no, I didn't even think about that. That's wild. But now they have to get Geraldine back in. And I, I don't I mean, think they can. I think Wanda, she her cover is super blown. Like Wanda is not letting her back in at all. They're gonna have to send somebody else. Um, but Agnes, so you're like Agnes is such a nosy neighbor, right? Um, from the comics, if you remember, the woman who trained uh, Wanda, Agatha, the witch who trained Wanda, Agatha Harkness, yeah. she, that's who everyone thinks Agnes is because Agnes is kind of like a riff on the name, Ag, yeah. Harkness, Ness, Agnes. Put it together. And yeah. she wears the same brooch that Agatha Harkness wears in the comics, um, mm. like on her necklace and stuff. Right. Um, so they, there's this other underlying theory that I also, to me, Mephisto is going to come back in a big way in these upcoming episodes because they've been hinting at Mephisto so much, even with the pregnancy being the highlight of this episode. Agatha keeps referencing her husband. She's called him the devil. She, like, she, she keeps kind of right. referencing that she's got somebody at home that she wishes she could get rid of. And you've never seen him. And you've never seen him. He's the and, only one you haven't seen. And if you think about which lore, which is kind of our married to the devil by default. <laughs> that's that's how it works to all the Sabrina fans out there. You guys know they sign their names in the book. But that could be how we get Mephisto into the storyline. And that's why Agnes is like, look, be quiet, hush, hush, her. We know we want to get out, but we, we're all kind of trapped here, so deal with it. And she's so helpful to Wanda throughout every episode because that was her role in the comics as well. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah, it, her husband could be Mephisto. Um, I, yeah, that is a possibility. Her husband definitely could be Mephisto. And the reason why we haven't seen him is because... <laughs> Um, he's waiting to appear. Like, we still have to go through the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So, with that being said, that'll give the boys three decades to grow up, and then that'll give Mephisto so many episodes to make his move. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll definitely see. I'm uh, I'm excited, man. They Marvel did it again. This Marvel was a really did- good episode. I wish I wish DC could get their shit together the same way, but <laughs> Marvel, Marvel did it again. But yo, so um, so go ahead and plug yourself, Mermaid Moon Child. Tell them where else they can see you besides the blurred view. Um, other than the blurred view, you guys can catch me on my Instagram. That's at mermaid dot moon child, um, where we are sharing astrological. Uh, information. You can get some metaphysical information, numerology, tarot, whatever's your pleasure. Um, that is what we do over there. And uh, if you ever need some clarification of reading yourself, feel free to DM me. We can book a session. Um, you can also catch me on some of the TVV After Dark episodes, our sister podcast. Um, so check those out as well. Word. And it's your boy, Jonathan D'Angelo, aka Johnny D. You guys can catch me on the Blurred View on every platform, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple, Google. Just type in the blurred view. Uh, we'll have these reviews up every every Saturday night, Sunday for you guys. And we'll have podcast episodes every Wednesday and Friday for your viewing and listening pleasure. So you guys tune in for that. Like and subscribe. Follow us for more content. And you have tuned into the Blur View. Thank you. And we will see y'all next week. Peace.